Boakao is the most iconic fighter in Muay Thai, a fighter that all martial artists around the world have come to love. But although his destiny was becoming the darling of eight limbs, most people don't know that he was truly an underdog that was never meant to shine. Of course, in hindsight, that seems silly. Today, we know him for his prolific matches with Masato and his unforgettable matches with Andy Sauer. We remember his angriest moments and his incredible 62 win and 5 loss run against the best kickboxers in the world since his last K1 Grand Prix tournament. Boakao's underdog story is one truly worth telling. You see, Boakao was never meant to fight in the K1 Grand Prix tournament. He was not even close to being the best Muay Thai fighter of his time and usually K1 had picked the best from Thailand. Technically speaking, Boakao wasn't even the best Muay Thai fighter in that same tournament, as the Australian superstar John Wayne Parr had arguably fought and beat more decorated fighters than Boakao had at that time. The best fighter at that time was arguably Nam Sak Noi, Boakao's camp senior. Initially, Nam Sak Noi was supposed to fight in the 2004 Grand Prix tournament. Dubbed the Emperor, Nam Sak Noi was considered one of the greatest of his era. With a ridiculous 285 wins and 15 loss record, and wins against the likes of Sanchai in his prime. Had he fought, he would have likely dominated that tournament. But that was not Nam Sak Noi's destiny. He was injured and Boakao was his replacement. For this reason, many pundits like to criticise Boakao for never having won a stadium title. But while Borkow was never an elite stadium champion, he was ranked number one in Namsat Noi's division and still had multiple noteworthy titles. As a young 21 year old fighter, he capitalised on the opportunity given to him and it was on the stages of K1 where he truly shined. In the first match, he beat John Wayne Park in a razor thin back and forth match. Then he fought Japan's number 2 kickboxer in Takayuki Kohiri Maki with the crazy angry knees and low kicks that we'll never forget about. In the third match, he then utterly humiliated Japan's number one in Masato. With amazing teeps, knees and roundhouses. Boakao looked like he could fight another five matches based on his incredible power, durability and heart. In the next year, Boakao would again make it to the finals of the 2005 Grand Prix Tournament, but only to lose a controversial split decision against the great Andy Sauer. Over the course of an action-packed five round bout consisting of two additional rounds,
like any champion would, Borkow didn't give up, and in the next year he dominated Mike Zambides with an incredible display of switch kick and long guard tactics combined with the clinch. While beating Muay Thai greats such as Jean Charles Tarboski, John Hod, Marco Pique, Borkow was a man possessed and on fire. On tournament night, he dominated Japan's top prospect, Yoshihiro Sato. Then the formidable Gago Drago. and then knocked out Andy Sauer to once again capture the Grand Prix title. Doing so made him not only the youngest champion, but also the only man at the time to capture the most prestigious world title in kickboxing twice. The years 2004 to 2006 were truly the highlights of Borkow's career, and his heart and beautiful display of Muay Thai won him fans around the world. The Grand Prix titles would elude him from 2007 to 2014, for no fault of his own. Whether it's legitimately losing to Masato, losing controversially to Andy Sawa, or Enrico Kiel, going forward it didn't matter. By this time, Borakau, to many people, was the greatest ambassador to Muay Thai they had ever seen. And despite not capturing the K1 title again, he was considered by most to be the best striker they had ever seen, so much so that Borkel became synonymous with Muay Thai itself. The craziest thing about all this is that Borkel didn't make a single penny of his K1 career, as his former gym boss at Paul Pramuk exploited their fighters and took all their earnings. This is the unfortunate fate of many fighters in Thailand, being exploited by their owners. But luckily for Boakao, with the help of the Thai media and the royal family in Thailand, he was able to break free from the gym ownership and contract. With national coverage of the injustice, Boakao went from only being a superstar to foreigners to a national superstar within a week. Since then, he's appeared in movies and big time commercials everywhere. And he truly cannot go anywhere in Thailand without being swarmed by fans who love him. Today, he's one of the most well-paid athletes and entertainers in all of Thailand, a true megastar by any measure. As a small town farm boy who was never meant to fight in the world's most prestigious kickboxing tournament, becoming our hero was his destiny. This is the legend of Borakau. If you enjoy deep diving into martial arts technique and philosophy, please consider checking out my new book, Legendary Striking. Right now, it's on launch discount and your support would mean a lot to me. I'm Lawrence Kenshin and thank you for watching Striking Breakdowns.